this is Deborah Anderson, the Black Woman Animator, coming back to you with another video. And in this video, I have Maritza Lewis. Welcome. Why? Can you introduce yourself? What? Haslach. Ich pis no seal. I squeeze Maritza Lewis. In tune to Florina Joseph, Tila Schwafke. I miss them, Mike Lewis, Tila Silk. Hello, and good evening, my friends. My name is Marita Lewis, and uh, my mother was Florina Joseph, and my father is Mike Lewis, and I'm from the, well, uh, Schwecker and Shield Nation. So thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> so, where are you from, and how mm -hmm. was it growing up? Ooh, yeah. Well, uh, like I said, I'm from the, uh, Shield and the Schwecker are, uh, or shoe swap in the Okanagan Nations in the interior of BC. So um, uh, you probably heard like Opogo and stuff like that. And it's just all in the valley in that area. And that was really pretty. It was kind of really nice, kind of mellow upbringing for a while there. Like it was, I didn't know it wasn't uncommon to, to grow up on a reserve like that, like until I moved into the city and, and you know, my parents split up and you know, spend half and half time, kind of, right? You do a little bit of both. And yeah, I don't know. It was a lot of fun. It was, grew up up, up, up in the boonies. I call it the, up the hill. We all call it up the hill. It was up in the boonies. Uh, it's about a half an hour outside of like Vernon itself, Vernon proper. And just, I don't know. It was a lot of fun. And, you know, rode horses, played with the dogs, went for walks, goofed around, went swimming. Tons of cousins, and then you go into the city, Phew, nothing. You gotta be careful, or like, wait, who's that over there? <gasps> People, oh, weird. I don't trust you. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, a little bit back and forth. But yeah, overall, pretty good. Ups and downs like everybody else. I know that uh, we all got our own little burdens to carry, but for the most mm -hmm. part, more better than worse. What are some of your best childhood memories? Oh, dude, yeah. <sighs> It's kind of a tough one, right? This is like a therapy question. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know, like, yeah, the summers. I didn't, you know, like, hang out with my cousins when I was little. It's kind of like built-in friends, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you just go and play. And we had a hammock outside between two trees. And I didn't realize that wasn't, like, a real hammock until I went to, like, some of the city and then saw, like, a proper hammock with other people. I'm like, oh, that's fancy. Ours was, like, <laughs> two, like two horse leads. Uh, tied around a tree with a blanket wrapped over and just kind of sit and swing in that thing. It was fun. Uh, you it go worked. riding. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it totally worked. It was great. You go riding and um, like uh, my father was um, a horse breeder along with uh, many other things. And uh, yeah, it was fun. You go riding. I didn't realize you also see the, he would, wouldn't let us ride a saddles though, because uh, I think, I think two things. I think I figured it out now as an adult. I think one, he didn't want to have to deal with it, like having to saddle up the horses all the time. But also he was like, ah, it's not Indian. You don't he's all right saddle, you don't gotta do that. So you just you just ride bareback and you just go out there and spend the whole summer out. And that's like I don't know. I feel bad for kids today though, because they don't they don't get the that experience of getting to go outside and just play until it's dark and then come back. And yeah. Now we got kicked out of the house. As soon as the sun was up, you ate and they're like, get out of the house, go play. And you're like, on it. And they come back in when you're hungry, you're like, can we get some, we want a little food? All right, come on, get in here, you get in, and get back out and you go play and do stuff. It was fun. Yeah, I saw somebody talking about how, like, when we were younger, you could, like, you could go so far without, like, like, if you chose to, you could go really far <laughs> without your parents knowing because they didn't track you. It's just like, leave and come back at a certain time yeah you run off they put a tile on you or whatever and track you it was just like you know house. we had the dogs of course we had to go with the dogs and the dogs protected you and mm -hmm. they'd be out there and they'd love it because they go out and they eat like all the little there's like little wild strawberries and if you if you could get to them before the dogs could you're like yes and you just like eat them but they're like tiny little things but they were so good mm -hmm. and that was fun they protected you and it was fine just like a little pack of little blue healers running around you doing whatever and come back and it's fun. 
did you uh, get to participate in any like customs or traditions growing up from your culture? Uh, yes and no. A bit of both. Um, so my mom, um, she, she was uh, at the Camel Residential School for when she was very young. Um, she was taken and she was put in the school and she was there all the way up until the end. And uh, yeah, that was a tough go, I think, for her. She didn't like to talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. But then it also kind of meant that she didn't get to do a lot of the cultural things and they put a lot of shame in her about those things. So she, it kind of trickled down effect, mm -hmm. right? And uh, oh, yeah, uh, fun fact my name actually comes from <laughs> that whole thing. My aunts, they, they, um, they bailed. They're like, fuck this. And they, <laughs> they ran away from the schools and they ran off down to the States. They married Hispanic men. They lived in the, they picked apples on the orchards and stuff like that. And, uh, I was named after, um, Maritza, uh, one of the girls, one of the girls that come up from, uh, down South mm -hmm. and, uh, she was named after Maritza Rodriguez, famous singer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, when they're trying to figure out what they name me, they're like, Thinking maybe Elizabeth. Does Elizabeth sound good? My auntie's like, no, it's not the same or Maritza. Yeah, let's do that. And so now also it's kind of funny because my name, uh, it Maritza Lewis, it, it reads as very Hispanic online. Mm -hmm. So I get a lot of folks following me on like my Instagram that are Hispanic. They're like, you're Hispanic, right? Now. <laughs> I'm light. <laughs> I'm light for a native, but like, no. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we, we did do a lot of cultural things. My dad was very supportive of that as well. And uh, a lot of OBP ceremony uh, when we were younger and smudging. Mm -hmm. prayers, like, I uh, always remember waking up and hearing a tsk, tsk, tsk. And like, it's my dad praying. <laughs> so he was burning sage in the morning. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, my grandpa spoke uh, in Silicon. And it was so cool to actually hear him talk. Uh, mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time with my grandparents because, like, both my parents were, they worked a lot. They worked really hard. And uh, it's just very common in traditional families to, like, you know, offload you with, like, aunts and uncles and relatives and cousins. And then we right. kind of moved from, like, in the summertime, four of the cousins would move between houses. <laughs> and there was, like, your job is your, your turn. You can look after them. I got a break. And then it would rotate around and you do this kind of thing. But a lot of time I'd be spending with my, my granny and grandpa and, uh, they're awesome. She was really great. She taught a lot of things. Um, she taught me how to bead and nice. how to sew. I still know how to sew. And uh, I didn't get to learn the language as much as I would have liked to, though. Mm -hmm. um, and I have been uh, actually now been taking uh, classes and set, um, learning my language, which is freaking amazing. It feels so good. I can't. Uh, is it hard to explain how awesome it feels? Mm -hmm. to hear it and then be able to listen to an elder speak and you're like oh, i understood that <laughs> you just sit there and quietly dork out and just be so like really happy yeah to, to feel like makes you all warm and fuzzy inside mm -hmm. but yeah there's little things that we got to do and it, it it it's really kind of incredible right now there there's this um i think because of the 215 and the the children at Kimlupa that they have found and mm -hmm. it has kind of relit a fire in a lot of a lot of the nations and mm -hmm. we're trying to reclaim our, our our culture and our history that's been stolen and to decolonize all of it and it's yeah it is it's incredible it's inspiring it feels amazing like i'm mm -hmm. starting to see the little ones come up and they're getting all this stuff that like uh more access to information more sharing of culture more traditions are starting to come back like Oh, it's wonderful. And uh, this year I got to go to my, my naming ceremony, which was incredible. Um, not, it wasn't just mine. It was many others. And it was, no, it wasn't, it wasn't, they wouldn't just do it for me. But, anyway, uh, but it was really cool. And it's, you know, I'm 30, 38. <laughs> and, uh, you know, getting a name feels good. Nice. So what was your journey in art and animation during your childhood up until like maybe college or whatever college uh art yeah i don't know we had some like uh some family that had some skills there uh i have one cousin my cousin he's real bougie uh fancy super traditional artistic guy he's in galleries and stuff and 
you know, growing up, we saw the paintings at my grandma's, and there was this big wall and this giant painting. Like, oh, that's so cool. Like, your cousin did that. And I was like, oh, oh, that's awesome. But then you find about these things, and yeah, like, my mom could draw, like, um, for filling out the forms for horse registration, you have to fill in the markings and you kind of have to draw a lot of stuff for them. And my mom would do that for my dad. She had like, she's beautiful, like printing and, and drawing. So it was so impressive. And um, they were really encouraging for that kind of stuff. So that I, I love to draw and I love to make little things, little goofy mm -hmm. things and uh, you know, mud pies, pro mud pie. I get to make those real good. And uh, those little dough creatures. Mm -hmm. I made a really awesome Felcor. I'm so proud of it. it was, <laughs> I look at it now and I'm like, it was a masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it was so little. It didn't really do much. And you get those drawing books too when you're a kid. And I don't know. They were supportive of those kind of things. And I just keep drawing and doing little things. I wasn't though like pro when I was little. It was still doing some work. But when I actually did like this really cool, um, there's those little fluffy dogs called. They're not quite huskies, but they're Pomeranian. Or... Nah, it's got a smushy face. I'm drawing a blank uh, today. Anywho, not important. I'm smushy face in dog. The comments, though. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're like, I know that dog. But I drew one of those little guys, and uh, it turned out really good. And I was like, Hey, I'm not too bad at this. I think I should do more of this. And it kind of carried on like into high school. Uh, wasn't the best at school, and I went through like a pretty solid delinquent phase for a while there mm -hmm. and then I turned it around uh you know, grade 11 grade 12 ish I'm like yeah I get serious I really want to do something mm -hmm. I gotta buckle down and I did it hard I focused <laughs> and I did all the things and uh, I was really lucky to have um some really cool art teachers actually at my school that were very supportive of of what I was doing although we did kind of bump against like there's this problem that happens like if you're an indigenous artist um they only want you to do indigenous art and it has to be like traditional mm -hmm. traditional art and i'm like so you only want beads and feathers and animals and let's say i can't do anything else i can't be modern so it's just weird boxing of like so you get no room to grow for that part mm -hmm. so i did we did bump against that but she was actually really cool because um i didn't want to do pe uh, i didn't i didn't like sports I wasn't like the other kids on the res. Some of them were really good. The girls on the res were so good at ball. And my dad was a good, like, at sports. My mom wasn't the best at it. But she was good at basketball. And then, but I uh, I couldn't for the life of me. I, I know you play basketball, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, I'm all right. But, like, so she was really cool. And she's like, okay, uh, well, you know what? How about we drop that gym class? If you take another one of my art classes, I'm like, done. Not a problem. <laughs> easy. Not a problem. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I'm doing it for sure. And it was any any more excuse to go in there and draw and paint and muck about. They were really nice. Mm hmm Yeah. Oh, uh, where did I go from there? I did go to university. Uh, did drop out. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> but I found out it was, um, it wasn't for me. Also, mm -hmm. I didn't want to be an artiste. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to be a teacher. So four years of doing this was not how I was going to get into the industry. And that was kind of a big turning point, actually. After I kind what, of realized. What led you to 3D modeling? Um, do I love cartoons? <laughs> all cartoons all the time. Uh, so I went to this program. I don't know. It's, it's kind of, I think they stopped it now. Like, uh, it's called Katimovic. And it's kind of like this weird thing where, um, I don't know who started it. I, we, we had a lesson on it and I, I gapped, but <laughs> <laughs> it's like this thing where they, they, they like, uh, shack you up in a house with like 11 other Canadians, you know, all over, all over the place. And, um, you know, and you go and you volunteer across Canada and you live in this house, shared house with no TV, limited internet. It's like roughing it. But this is like pre cell phone times too, so it's not like you could be on your phone being like, "I don't like you guys." I'm just gonna <laughs> right. ignore you. Thing, uh, you actually had to interact with these people, and it was like, <laughs> it was good. You didn't get to pick these people either. They just, bam, yeah, living with them, and it's it's a transition. Um, but what that really did help me uh, figure out was 
what I didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew I wanted to do art when I left high school. I'm like, cool. I got a scholarship, a little one. It was, it was like a little baby one. I think it covered maybe books, a, a portion of portion, portion, portion of my books. And the rest was covered by me. It took me a long time to pay off that, but um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I went through it and I volunteered at like an Alzheimer ward up in Cornell. Um, I volunteered at a school in St. Perpetue in Quebec. And I also volunteered at a food bank in Kitchener. And during that time, it was really kind of great because I realized that my mom was a nurse. I'm like, I'm not cut out for this. <laughs> it's too hard. Like, it, it's really heavy on the heart for that yeah. kind of work. And mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to crumble. I'm, I can't do that. <laughs> Well, there's better people. There's better suited for that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm like, okay, that's off the list. Oh, don't want to be a teacher. That's for sure. Uh, I do like mentoring though. Mentoring is fun. I do enjoy mentoring, mm -hmm. but a teacher, it's not for me. And I think that's good to recognize that not everybody's meant to be a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, like, I've had some teachers where I'm like, why are you doing this, man? I don't think you really like this. <laughs> if you like one that not everybody's meant to be a teacher, and then two that some people suck at teaching. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god, yeah. I remember having to like it's terrible. Well in my class, I like pinch my hand to try and stay awake. I was trying so hard. I'm like, I need this information. I need to know this. This is this is gonna be really important for my demo reel. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> he's talking, he's almost done. I'm gonna absorb this. No. <laughs> Sorry. Back to Katinovic, I, I was in there and uh, when I was volunteering at the food bank, I really loved how diverse it was. The people, were, everybody was different. It came from all walks of life and I loved that. That was my favorite part of that. And that when I was in there, uh, I still felt this um, pull to art that I couldn't escape. And I think it's, um, there's this really cute little short story called, I'm rambling, uh, <laughs> the art, Arties aren't stupid. And mm -hmm. it was like, they talk about this like ache that kind of happens when you don't, you don't create something. Mm -hmm. And I can always kind of tell when I haven't done enough modeling or done enough creative part of modeling where I'm starting to get grouchy. <laughs> and it's just like, settle down, go make something. You know, come <laughs> right. And that's kind of what led me to like going back to that. You know, I, I went back, did my one year fine arts, left. I'm like, how many essays do you really want us to write? And is this relevant to my career in the industry? I don't think so. I've been doing this for like over 17 years now, and I don't think I've ever been once asked to write an essay. You can grant a proposal, but like nobody's asked me to write an essay. And like they want you to keep it point form. And so, you know, email writing, yeah, that's important. I do recommend my mentees that they try and practice some of that if they can, because it's tough. Um, yeah. yeah. But it led me to VFS, and I did my one year program there. And dude, that was hard. That was hard. It was good. It was good, kind of hard, though. It was like, exciting because it's like great well like waking up this part of your brain that you're not really used to and it's like really putting something because all i did was like you know did do sculpture but it's not quite the same as when you're doing it in 3d yeah and like when you're using a tablet that's different and then translating these two things mm -hmm. uh, i didn't learn enough though I, I will say i didn't learn enough and i think a lot of it you learn actually on the job yeah and uh they do, I learned on soft homage. That's when I got my job in Korea, they, it was soft homage. I had never heard of soft homage. It does have like the proportional tool, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like ZBrush a little bit. Like that's probably the, the best part of uh, XSI. But my first job in the industry, uh, and it took me a little bit to get in. Um, not as long as some others, but not as short as others. You know, mm -hmm. it was a healthy amount. So it was like three months in, I, I get my first uh, first job in the industry. And um, yeah, I was like sitting down, buddy next to me. I was like, oh, in um, XSI, it's called this. What was it called in Maya? This is like, you gotta remember, this is before like tutorials. We actually had right. like DVD tutorials on how to learn stuff. And mm -hmm. if you didn't have a friend on Messenger, on like MSN Messenger, <laughs> then you you were on your own like you you, you pray to god that they're online and they'd be like i got a question <laughs> do you help and you just learn as you go though yeah that is so beneficial because i um 
I've been learning ZBrush and I've done some like um, Zoom sessions with my friends slash mentors and just be, and they're like, one person's like barely ahead of me, but I was like, I have this question. He's like, oh, boom, boom, boom. And it's like, that saves me like two to three hours or a day from mm. like searching online <laughs> when oh you can just God. answer my question. You ever like, yeah, if you ever try like looking up some of this stuff online now, you're just like, get to the answer. Where's the answer? I, I love it when they put like the little, like, uh, I don't know what they're called, the little prompts that like the in the side and you can just like yeah. and scrub and I'm like, yeah, okay. that, that's everything's a video now. It used to be like you could just go to a blog and be like, doop, that's my answer. <laughs> yeah. Well, ZBrush is actually pretty good too. And it is a weird ass program. I remember the, it, uh, God. When I was in school, I had a teacher that, um, he decided to teach, I think, like two people in my class in the modeling mm -hmm. stream. And the rest of us, he's like, mm, I don't really want to. You guys are a lot of effort. I don't really want to teach you guys. And, you know, I don't know. You know, maybe he was having a rough semester. Who knows? I, mm -hmm. But like we never got to learn any of that and we had to do it on our own and try and figure it out and you know the lessons learned it's it, it is a funny program but once you kind of get into it you, you you get in there and it starts making a little bit more sense and uh i like, I like both mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a zbrush cowboy i, I enjoy uh, <laughs> I, I like maya as much as i like zbrush and they're both important and you know it's fun yes are you enjoying it though are you enjoying like messing around with zbrush um messing around no mm -hmm. i am in a class at noman and i'm enjoying actually <gasps> having some direction <laughs> you are that's awesome are you doing like a like a full character or a bust or are you doing yeah that's what will be our final project as a character and so my uh teacher is ex-military so i'm like yes he probably <laughs> thinks like me and <laughs> he can answer my questions because i'm like not fully creative i'm like half analytical and i'm like ah this oh, i'm struggling <laughs> Oh, well, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, having like directive, like purpose with your study is so important. And that really does help like give you a direction because just kind of making like make a rock. Okay. Now what? <laughs> You're not motivated to make a rock. So, right. you, but you get motivated and really excited to do, um, like designs. And that, that's kind of like the really fun thing about, about, you know, going into ZBrush is, is going through different design, trying different design languages. It is so exciting to, find a designer that you're really liking and try out how that looks. And yeah. like, there's, there's, you can do really rounded stuff, really curvy, really angular stuff. And it's mm -hmm. all different. And yeah, I thrive when exciting. I'm initially learning something, I thrive in a classroom setting. And mm -hmm. then if I know what I'm doing, then YouTube and stuff is my jam. But like, mm -hmm. if I'm learning it, oh my God, I'm like, I'm drowning. <laughs> 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 don't describe the water tell me tell me it's really, really I, I yeah it, it is it, it is funny um projects personal projects are are really important you know and that's something i didn't learn until much later and i that's wish... why i want to learn zbrush because i have all these like projects that i am not capable of doing yet <laughs> well, well i mean i i am a so modeler much. but i'm a hard service modeler so i'm hmm. like i need to get more into characters so yeah you can do both. It's transferable. You, it, it does work. Like uh, that's one thing about modeling. But it's, anatomy, though, anatomy is actually is it's funny because years and years of studying it, and I still have so much to learn. Like it, it, it never stops. And I think that's like one of the first things I kind of noticed when I'm doing like mentor stuff is uh, mm -hmm. trying to help them out with some of those things and, yeah. and understanding that it does need to go into a rig. It does need to, or a rig yeah. does need to go into it, and it does need to function. So. Yes, those things look really cool, but if you want it to be more than just a sculpture, then you got to think of how it's going to move at the same time. And I think yeah, uh, it's kind of like the difference of like going into um, environment, hard surface stuff, and going uh, different skill sets, and then going into characters and, and mm -hmm. the other area. I feel like your sets are really complicated, and they need like precision and and thought and effort to organize and structure them and make it work and that for it to be clean. Yes, yeah, dude, <laughs> you're gonna crush it. Uh, and then characters, it's like you you can be on this one thing this entire time, and and you're thinking about how it moves, how it's going to deform, and and everything. You can kind of get lost in all the details, and adding little fun bits is always kind of I like it. I like doing all the modeling. To be honest, I there's 
yes, I am a visual development modeler and concept mm -hmm. builder, but I, I like doing it all, like cars. Do, uh, Ford versus Ferrari, I think I did so many cars. <laughs> By the end of it, I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> no more cars for me. I'm good. And then I, I did um, a Lunar Lander, and that was cool because I was nerding out on all the little like machinery on there, and I'm like, ooh, look at this. Oh, look at that. It moves. Oh, and it was actually kind of cool, and you're like, I'm getting paid to look up stuff about Lunar Landers. This is awesome. <laughs> While you're naming stuff, let's oh. go through our list of projects. You have a lot, so I'm just going to highlight some. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> so, um, and if you want to mention any additional ones that I skip over, but I'm going to just highlight a few. Sure. Um, so, FIFA Soccer 07. Oh, dude, that's old. Happy, happily and ever after. That was the first one I worked on. I made grapes. They're really good. And I got to do some other stuff. And it was, there was choice. Although, ask me now if I can, I can't stand because of EA, I, um, my, my, my tour of duty at EA. I can't stand, <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand the sound of soccer mm. in the background because they had the FIFA floor was one below the, the art department. Mm -hmm. And they had the game devs would all have their like soccer things going. All you would hear was like that soccer ambient stadium noise. And I'm just like, me, I was on a chalkboard. I can't do it. Uh, 50 Cent Blood of the Sand, a Blood on the Sand. That was fun. We actually, for mocap testing on that one, we got to put a, a exotic dancer mocap <laughs> on him to test out his like rig. And we're just like, mm -hmm. he moved. He's good. Yeah. Max Payne 3. Ooh. A lot of girls in that five. <laughs> that was Grand Theft Auto 5 was weird because I was in a funny department in that one. It was like make all the weird art uh, backwards. So some of the stuff they're asking me to make, like I made gilf, like a saucy gilf thing. And I'm like, what's a gilf? And I looked, I'm like, oh dang. And I'm like, yeah, that's what it is. That was a uh, that was intense uh time. Sausage party. Yes, equally offended everybody <laughs> yes. across the board. Um, uh, yeah, I, I had to watch it because of the end, and it was like, whoa, this is a lot. <laughs> yeah, there, I, there's only one model I refuse to work on for obvious reasons, and um, well, actually two, because there's two in that scene I was not going to work on. I'm like, mm -hmm. somebody else can handle this. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not, and they would, they knew not to assign it to me anyway. <laughs> But like, uh, my first day on that job was hilarious, and uh, my soups were really nice. And they're like, "Are you cool with doing this model?" And I was like, "Yeah, no problem." And they like show me the design. I'm like, <laughs> "For real? <laughs> yeah, this is it." What's her name? Is her name really? Camille Toe. <laughs> oh dang! I was like, "That yeah." It was fine. There's a lot of stuff on that show. It made a lot of faces on food. Mm -hmm. That's good. It made a decapitated head. That was fun. It reminded me back to my old rock star days of like mm -hmm. weird things. Uh, it got to the point when I was at Rockstar too, where uh, me and my there's it was a small character team in Vancouver before they moved to Toronto, San Diego. Mm -hmm. uh, and my buddy and I were there, and I was like, I don't know if I feel good about doing this gore stuff. Do you want to do you want to take this one? Because sometimes also. Um, when guys work on female characters, they can kind of get like, you know, kind of tit tunnel vision kind of thing, mm -hmm. and they can make them a little funny. Like, yes. yeah, yeah. So I do a little. So I'm like, I just let me let me do this. I, I got this. This is fine. So I did a lot of background girl ones that were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fun fact: I actually had to stay awake on some <laughs> of us. I think it was the longest hours, second longest hours ever pulled, and it was. Um, this is like back in the day when you actually you had to project textures onto the models as opposed mm -hmm. to this is pre-substance days. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. Yes, I did a vulture suit. That was cool. Nice. So much gack. <laughs> Put all the gack on there. That was, it was fun. It was the uh, first visual effects stuff I kind of really did. It was very different mm -hmm. than some of the other stuff I've done. Like, uh, but yeah, it was fun. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, Spider Noir and uh, mm -hmm. Tombstone. Yeah. Spidey Very Ham. Fun. Spidey Ham, yeah, he was cute. Some of this stuff gets done also. Um, it's like retopo, some of that stuff. So you might get some of it down from Spa. 
and then it'll come up and then we got to rework work and then continue with it. But that was a fun project, man. When we were working on this, we're like, are you, do they really want us to put <laughs> geo, floating geo on top of the, are we allowed to do that? Are they not going to do that in text tree? No. Okay, cool. We're going to do that. It's going through. Got approved. <laughs> um, the Adams family too. Yeah. Oh, uh, I got to do some first day on. Uh, and I was late to joining, and I got to work on. It. They're like, "Hey, you cool with this one?" And they give me this thing, and my buddy Casey is there working, and uh, it was a tentacle fester. <laughs> They're like, "Here, you can do this, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure, no problem." Hmm. Wait, what? Okay. Then the next one was the Chimera chicken monster thing. It just had me cracking up laughing when they gave me the design. I was looking at this thing like. <laughs> We got udders, and they're like, yeah, and we're not allowed to put the udders on, so we got to take them off and do all this other stuff. And it was, it was fun, though, because you get to make, like, little hook feet, and then, like, chicken feet, and then little piggy tail, and then the bird thing. is a lot of fun. Um, and most recently, DC League of Super Pets. Ooh, yeah. Well, that's got a bunch. That was really fun, to be honest. Like, that was my first kind of uh, doing a lot more visual development, sculpting for that one. It's really cool. Um, getting to work with the that's actually really my favorite part is getting to work with the designers and sit with them and, and kind of brainstorm the you know, best approach to translate into 3D because sometimes it doesn't, you know, how it is. Like, sometimes it doesn't really translate very well into a different approach mm -hmm. to make it work. And uh, Miyomi and uh, Matt were amazing. And so many of the other guys that were on that project were awesome. and getting to talk to directors and try and figure out what they want. It's like one of those situations where it's like, uh, I got something in my head and I want you to figure it out. And you're like, on it, I'm gonna do it. And I'm gonna do it twice as hard. Uh, and that was fun. Like I got to do um, a lot of concept sculpting and also a lot of cleanup on that one. A lot of expressions and pose testing. And a lot of characters on there that when the final movie comes out, which I believe is rumored to be me, Gonna be exciting that has been in the works for a while yeah. yeah um so how did you feel working on the hill agency indigenous film noir game i'm not going to attempt to pronounce this word <laughs> i know you know what you're not alone we all goofed it up and you know why i'm not anishinaabe <laughs> i just accept that i'm not i'm not anishinaabe i, I i'm still uh, I'm more Seal fan uh, than I am. You know, this is the thing. It, like, natives were different. We are so different. Natives out east, you know, indigenous folks out east are different from out here. Yes, we all come from the same mm -hmm. nation as a whole, but we're also very different. And mm -hmm. uh, that, dude, that was a trip. That was so awesome. Um, being a minority in this industry is kind of interesting mm -hmm. for a lot of reasons. And getting to work on that project like i've never got to work on a show like as with like members of my team other modelers or riggers designers whatever you know uh that were indigenous except for one time it was like a dog fluff on me sorry my dog is getting older so he's shedding all the time uh, mm -hmm. and it was my cousin <laughs> she was in accounting and she's awesome yeah shout out stacy she's great um but like getting to work on on that game and when that game came through for for the thing uh you know my partner's like hey so there's this company that's interested in doing this this thing for they need some help doing some character work for this game you know it's an indigenous film noir futurism <laughs> Female lead, what? Yes, fuck yeah, let's do it. Give my number, let's, let's set up now. And you know, I, I talked to them and Megan, she's wonderful. Um, and I got to work with Sade as well uh, as designer and uh, it, was, it was amazing. Um, kind of hits you in the, mm -hmm. it, dude, it was so awesome. Um, one, you get to talk, you get to like uh, doing, I did the majority of the characters. Uh, I led the 
And then towards the end, when I was getting busy, some other stuff, I had to shift gears and move on to something else. And I had still um, structured and set up all of the pipeline for the character workflow. Mm -hmm. And uh, by getting to talk to an indigenous designer, talk about, you know, representation and design, designing with intent for it not to be uh, a stereotype, mm -hmm. but you're going for readability, indigenous readability on screen. So getting to do that was incredible and amazing. And it felt damn good, damn mm -hmm. good. And just uh, incredible that it's, they're out there, they're doing their thing. And um, I'm excited for them to get their game off the ground. We'll mm -hmm. see where they go. Fingers crossed. <laughs> That was a lot of fun. So what do you feel like the biggest breakthrough in your career was, was or have you had multiple breakthroughs? Ooh, breakthrough. Uh, kind of a funny one too, man, because uh, think about breakthroughs in my career and for a long time, the hustle, the hustle was real. Being Wanting, wanting to do characters and wanting to do main characters or anything in that realm it's very competitive. Like it's 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 a tough haul, and you really have to. There's only so many characters that need to be one, uh, done, first off, and then after that, you gotta like compete with people that have also been at the studio for a very long time. Sometimes, and sometimes they just they do the characters. Mm -hmm. um, and so you really gotta hustle hard. And for a long time, that's all I focused on was faster, better, faster, better, stronger, faster, better, stronger, and I. I'm ashamed to admit that I ghosted hours because I, I I cared about it so much and I wanted to do a good job. And I'm like, if I can't beat them with talent, I'm going to beat them with like raw enthusiasm and power. I'm going to hustle. Mm -hmm. And I did that for so long that, um, you know, at a certain point I stopped and I looked up and I'm like, whoa, um, I've never done a personal product until X amount of time. And I was looking at that and I'm like, that's, I'm robbing from myself. And I think that was the, the hard realization too, right? Like, and also when you do this, like when you start out, like you are so focused on the work that um, it's hard to make time for other things. And I think mm -hmm. it's really important to try and make time for other things uh, because it is so easy to get lost in the work and forget about everything else. And uh, I definitely was guilty of that. And the breakthrough for me was that, uh, Personal projects was that, that that big one for me, and it's just it's like it's like the cheat code. Yeah, you just look up so much faster, so much faster, and you learn so much more. And it's also, you know, in fighting to get to do all these next characters and to be good enough to get called to do those characters, uh, you're also realizing that I don't need somebody's permission to do this style of character. Uh, hello, Marisa, just go home and do one. All right. What's the problem? <laughs> Uh, and also, uh, you know, another breakthrough was kind of decolonizing my my idea of success. And for me in this industry, there's a lot of folks, for the length I've been doing this, a lot of people are like, why don't you want to be a supervisor? Why don't you want to be this, 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 and this? And I'm like, that wasn't my idea of success, to stay mm -hmm. at one spot and be there for 10, 12 years and live out my entire career at one studio. Uh, if the studio was right, I would. Sure. <laughs> If we got new projects coming in, we got all this stuff happening, like, yeah, definitely. But uh, for me, it's always been, is the project interesting? Is the is it going to help me level up? Is it something that I want to work on? And so instead of ladder climbing up, which I've seen a lot of my friends go off to do and do become like CG soups and whatever else, and all the power to them if that's their idea of success and what makes them feel good. Mm -hmm. But for me, that wasn't, like, I did it. I actually got that. So uh, very early on, um, I was supervisor for Ghostbusters uh, game cinematic. I did like a big stint of cinematics, and yeah, it was great. But also, I, I when they put you into those roles, I do think they need to offer support in mm -hmm. teaching you and encouraging you and giving you those soft skills to make it really work. Um, yeah, I feel like in the animation industry, like all of us go to like school for art and then yeah. become leaders and then nobody wants to do any professional development. <laughs> like, No, not at all. And it's like, did they ever teach you how to give a review? Did they ever teach you how to work things with your with your staff? And uh, I, I don't know. I did it 
And I've, I, I go through, I go through stints where I'm like, yeah, I'm the boss. I want to be the boss. Just because you like, you see things happening and it's not going the right way. And you're like, oh, I gotta fix this. <laughs> here, let, here, let me help and I'll fix this and we'll get it done. Uh, but then also I like to go back to just being an artist because doing the artwork and doing the art, that's what makes me happy. Mm -hmm. And just decolonizing that idea of success, that the only idea of success is lead, is soup, is this. Not for everybody. Yeah. You know, and uh, I, I like doing both. So I like to do a little bit, go back, and then you learn. But I also feel like when you do do a supervisor role, you do learn how to be a good uh, good artist at the same time. Because you, you, have, you get empathy for what it's like to be in that role. You have to know all the answers. You have to know all the things. You have to be able to negotiate, uh, you know, workload for your staff and to be there for them and to support them, to to know what they're going through, and to also know that there's a deadline and there's a client and there's a director and there's schedules. And I like me a spreadsheet, but, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a little bit of both. So, and the, But then going back to being an artist, then you go back to being an artist and then you can... I feel like you're more empathetic to your supervisors too, right? Like, yeah. It makes you a more well-rounded artist to do a bit of both. Plus yeah. also I didn't want to be those people that like you're, you're super soup for like 10, 15 years. And then that's all you can do. Is mm -hmm. Like I've seen some of them try and go back and be an artist and you're just like, what's a good boss. <laughs> I'll fix it later. Right. <laughs> Don't worry. So what do you love about being a modeler and animation in general? I think it goes back to that creating. It's uh, feeling that need for creation. They're all my little children. I make them. They go off into the world and they go succeed or they fail or they look terrible in rigging. I got to come back and I got to fix them. Send them back out again and do their thing. And, um, yeah. I think it's a lot of common people's like thing is getting to create the world and do the thing. I also feel like it's the problem solving. I really love mm -hmm. like this brain tingly goodness that happens when you're like problem solving something and you're just like clicks and you, it goes out and you're like, oh, I did that. Okay. <laughs> and every once in a while I'll go back to one of my old models and I'm like, oh, hey, this is really nice. Look at this wireframe. Oh, I did it. Yes. Cool. <laughs> I mean, there's some other ones too where I go back. And I'm like, ooh, really? Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's just bury that one under the rug a little bit and just say our goodbyes to it and be like, you tried. Good job. I feel like in in animation, like everything is tedious. So there's like the tediousness of rigging. There's a tediousness of modeling. There's te tediousness of animation. It's just like, which tediousness do you like? <laughs> How many times do you want to hit render or do you want to adjust that for like, a groom? Or pushing setting? and pulling points is my, is my thing. <laughs> I use this keys. Setting keys, pushing points, and grooming over. You're like, don't you ever get tired of spinning around the model? And you're like, do you ever get tired of listening to the same audio over and over again? When I sat close to the animator, I was just like, ugh. <laughs> Code, I, we always, we, for some reason, I always got, like, uh, my department and the character teams were always really small. So they always stuck us close to, I shouldn't say stuck. They placed us closer to the dev teams and the coders. And I just got really comfortable talking to the coding people. And they're always mm -hmm. fun, man. They're hilarious. They usually, they love games. And code, I try and look at what they're doing. I'm like, Alphabet soup, guy. Alphabet soup. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, but it looks really cool. Uh, yeah, it's. I, I agree. There is a lot of tedious things about work. Yeah, yeah. Any job has that though, man. Like, yeah, just like what, when what, I was what? The tediousness for it depends on like, do you get lost in it? And it's like, like when Flow? I used to be in college, and you go to the um, computer lab and like look up, and three hours later, you're like, oh wow, I didn't even know three hours passed. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's the best part i love that part the uh, you kind of get um you get into a flow mm -hmm. you need to, everything you're doing is just making sense and it's just clicking and it's just like i uh, like how a key goes on a lock and it's like it's just going and you just it feels good yeah it's uh, incredible it's what i imagine um so i used to play roller derby and there was like a moment when i was learning to skate uh that when I first figured out my crossovers, and it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh these I could do, and it felt awesome, and it was so good. And then you kind of just get into a groove. And you just mm -hmm. How 
uh, how is your approach to viz dev modeling different from like production modeling or VFX? So I'm a bit of a weird kid. Um, I want to label it, but yeah, I'm a weird kid. Uh, kind of uh, once I actually realized this job exists, I'm like, coming for you. You're gonna be mine. Uh, it's it's doing the concept stuff, so you're you're kind of trying to turn off your brain of all the technical aspects and then you're trying to shuffle it into just the pure aesthetics and trying to get um, the look across and also trying to connect everything together so that's actually one really great thing that when i was on uh, super pets is what we were working towards was getting all these characters that were fun but also sometimes when characters get created they kind of go off into their own little adventure and they're like come on kids back all in <laughs> We all got to line up. We all got to take those class photos. So everybody's got to be in the same thing. Yeah. So it's also about trying to get some of that stuff back in line with each other so they all live in the same world. And um, yeah, so it's more of a, an aesthetic thing and overall appeal and working mm -hmm. towards trying to just make it connect and feel good and feel right. And it's kind of like a, it's like good audio. When it happens, you don't notice it. When it's bad, you're like, what's that? What's that? Mm -hmm. Uh, and the last, um, yeah, this is a kind of fun part too, is that you also have a bit more of um, more interpretation mm -hmm. to work where um, I feel like in modeling you, are, I used to have like big opinions about this when I was earlier. And that's one thing too that I've learned over the years is that my opinions, if it's something where I have like really strong opinion about something, you know, give it three years and I'll be like, I was a dummy. <laughs> Calm down. Get off your horde about that thing. It's not as big a deal, new. Like, yeah. So you learn to like adjust your understanding of things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like. It, but then uh, the way that I like to do it also is that um, some people just like to throw it on there, and then just be like, "I'm gonna like dynamesh this and go crazy and do all these things." Well, I'm like, uh, too many years of production modeling has also made me a bit of a, a psycho for. Clean topo, yeah. Love me some clean topo. That is satisfying. Get some clean topo, and it's just beautiful. Uh, so I usually I do kind of a hybrid approach where I, I'll block out some of it in mm -hmm. in Maya, and I'll throw it into ZBrush right away, and I'll start reworking proportional stuff, and I'll pop it back in, and go back and forth a bit until I kind of get the feel for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is the kind of thing, funny thing too about some of the Vista stuff because you'll get um, some artists that will create it but not actually have an understanding for what is required of it to do mm -hmm. so if it needs to actually function so that's actually one thing I, I can do and i can when i go to the the conversation with designers and to uh with the directors you can be that point person to have the experience to be like i know that that's going to be a bit of a problem so here's my suggestion how to make it work yeah and you can work with them and um it's really fun like uh, when i was working with matt williams who was phenomenal 2d animator and designer just absolutely wonderful and getting to help him with he i learned so much from from him and him and me they're great um and tona uh on, at sensei mm -hmm. Grass, I, i'm terrible with last name mm -hmm. uh but they're like you learn so much from these guys that about art and the the aesthetics of it that it's fun so is that is what you just explain also example of like your like production mindful sculpting approach? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, just because like I've had to deal with not naming names, some VizDev sculpts that were a gong show, and uh, it it <laughs> I get it, man. Because like I've done that too, where I've had to do like some environment visual development stuff and create a whole set and then you come out and you're like i'm sorry it's a mess <laughs> it's crazy but for character stuff like i uh, i really like to get in there and make sure that it can be turned around very quickly so when i do my work because a lot of times uh, some directors would like to see it in pose they're like what's this t pose it's ugly that's not my design get it out of here i don't yeah. like it and you're like, I picked this design. That design is not being followed. Why not? And you're like, I get what you're seeing. <laughs> Let me throw it into a pose and let's put some expressions on it and make it come to life. Mm -hmm. And But when I do that, I also try and maintain it so that I can bring it back to the model itself or production and go out. Because what can happen sometimes also, too, is that um, uh, 
trying to <laughs> so what can else yeah like so you can get this pose and then they start ad adding things to it afterwards so like i want more of this here and more of this here and let's change all this but it's in this crazy pose yeah and then you got to bring it back to neutralizing sometimes when that happens you kind of lose a little bit of the magic too mm -hmm. so you have to be able to uh re it's like skating backwards you got to figure <laughs> out how to make it work to go back and mm -hmm. Uh, it just speeds up time. It speeds up and makes it go faster so that it can get out the door and they can get their most uh, most bang for their buck that they kind of want, right? That's where you're there. You're trying to help. Like, you don't want to make the process longer than it needs to be, right? Being like, I made this mess. <laughs> Please fix it. I will give it to you for someone else to fix. And it's just dog's breakfast, hot mess, <laughs> not pretty. And you're just like, I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> So I, I just don't, I just want to be that person having, be mindful of uh, downstream and upstream too, because some of the stuff yeah. is not going to work upstream mm -hmm. going into like groom texturing or whatnot. So yeah. Rigging. Can I think about that stuff? Yeah, it's important. What is a story you've never gotten to talk about? Like something that people wouldn't think to ask but is an interesting thing about you or just an interesting story? Ooh. Attacked by a lot of farm animals or ranch animals. <laughs> this, is a, this is the joy of growing up on a, on a ranch as a kid, man. Right? Uh, I've been stepped on. I've been kicked in the arm. Uh, I've been bucked off. Uh, I lost count here. Uh, I've been on a runaway horse. Full tilt, full like, full on, and I was hanging on, bareback, rain soft to the side, and I'm just like holding on to the mane, being like, ah! screaming, and my niece and my sister are just laughing their fucking asses off. They're just dying laughing, and my horse finally gets to the house and stops, and he's just like, ah, break. break <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> I don't want to ride anymore. <laughs> I go inside, I like unceremoniously fall off the horse and slide down. I go on the house, and dad's like, no kid of mine, so I can ride. I go back out there, and he makes me hug the horse and he say sorry to the horse. I'm sorry. I should have rode better. And this, uh, that makes me think, like, what's worse, like that, or like, you know, them like boats where you're like, you have to travel on those small boats for like, an hour and you're like pa 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 pa. Oh yeah, I went to I, I've never I haven't traveled tons, but like I went to Hawaii mm -hmm. and we got we got to go see the blue footed boobies. That's so freaking cool. Not Hawaii, sorry, Mexico. Jeez, mm -hmm. geograph. This is the problem with Canadian education system. They did not teach <laughs> us geography or geo any of that stuff. Like I feel like I have like a huge huge gaps in my knowledge where like there should be more and it's. It's so like later in life, you're only trying to fill these things in. But yeah, we were going on a boat to go see the blue footed boobies. And I was so excited. And the tour guys were like, hey, yeah, so it's really choppy. So this is about as far as we're going to go. But if you really want to go to that, like there's this beach you can land on. You can go on this little dune and stuff. Then just jump out and uh, swim really hard, really hard. Don't stop and just keep going. Yeah. And if you get close to the boat, make sure you push away. Yeah, just push away real hard. And we're all just like a bunch of sitting on the boat. We're like, <laughs> there's no going back. How much do we pay? Okay. <laughs> mm, doing it. Jump off and you're just like, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. You make it to the land and you're like, okay. Yeah. Am I doing that again? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, that also, I feel like a lot of, I don't know if it's just like my family upbringing. Uh, there's a lot of Come from a long line of um, cowboys. Mm -hmm. Cowboys and Indians, who knew, right? Mom's side was super traditional. My dad's side is like, they're all ranchers and cowboys. We're going way, way back. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, they're, they, they, they have bronc rider, bull rider, team roper, bell racers, whole kit and caboodle. And I feel like I got a little, little bit of that left in me. Mm -hmm. And I, my, my stupid bucket fills up a bit. And then I go we'll do something dumb. Mm -hmm. and get it out of my system and come back again uh, yeah i don't know if that's just me or just somebody else or we all get that or something you ever feel that no 
going <laughs> crazy. Like I've done skydiving, but I just was like, that's crazy. Yes, it is crazy. It is if for some people who like know me for a long time, they probably be like, oh, you went skydiving, but yeah, why not? It was much easier than bungee jumping. I kind of like when I went bungee jumping, I didn't. <laughs> like I had to bring me back down. <laughs> I was like, am I not doing am this? I, no. And my legs were like shaking for like the next five minutes. <laughs> but like the skydiving, it was like, okay. Uh the only thing is like um when a lot of air comes at my face, I, I can't breathe. So that was an interesting in the free fall. <laughs> do you get do you get a little bit of panic on that? Or just like <laughs> Well, because when we're going up, they like open the door for like a couple seconds on the way yeah. up and I'm and then I'm like Oh, okay. Yes, I remember that. I can't breathe in a lot of air. So I'm like, damn it. I'm going to be free falling for like 30 seconds. So I just didn't pass out. Long, 30 seconds, like, right there, right? like you're going down. Yeah, because I'm because I I was fully acknowledging that I that's how I am. So I'm like asking the dude that I was about to be strapped to. I'm like, so how can I like working around this and he's like on. oh do this and i'm like and so i we jump out the plane and i'm doing this and it's like the wind is coming over my hands this oh. is not <laughs> it's like make a mustache you'll make yourself laugh it's fine like, i'm what like are you telling me? i paid so. for this i got a video you did yeah i did the, um the slingshot thing my, my uncle we went to the Pialop fair and he's just like i'll pay any of y'all you go do that and all my other cousins were like, oh, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> and uh, I was like, I'll do it. They go up there and do it. And they're just like, guys messing with you. And uh, realizing later in life that how stupid it was to actually, first off, down in the States, no insurance down that way. You know, <laughs> your guys' healthcare scares the shit out of me. Um, <laughs> just, I, I, there's nothing would have stopped me from just like being impaled on one of those little side things. Like, oh, I don't know. Choices in your life, I wonder. <laughs> yeah. So, um, wh- how has being native, a woman, or anything else impacted you in your animation career, anyway, as far as like any discrimination? Or- it's a loaded one, right? <laughs> <laughs> I see how you do. You just get us all comfortable with everything. And you th- just gonna <laughs> lob that grenade over the fence. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like, what happened? <laughs> I spill some tea. Um, yeah, I'll be honest. There were some times it was not so great. Mm-hmm. Uh, being a woman early on in this industry was pretty brutal. Mm-hmm. Uh, not many women in, were modelers. One or two. I did get one or two. Most of it was men. So there's always that kind of uh, feeling. Mm-hmm. And buds like to stick together, like do their thing. And if you come in there and if you're not, they assume things about you. Mm-hmm. Also, um, yeah, I encountered like workplace bullying where people wouldn't put me in my place. Um, yeah, uh, I had when I was souping, I had um, I had a fella make one of my modelers cry on the floor reviewing his work. And I'm like, I I told him no, stop. You gotta stop. Mm-hmm. He's trying really hard, and what you're seeing is look, you're making him really upset. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't like that. He pulled me off the floor and he tried to, he closed the door and he tried to intimidate me. Mm-hmm. And when I wouldn't balk at him, man, you gotta realize like growing up, like my cousins, my half siblings, you know, like it's a tough go sometimes. So like mm-hmm. you get a little hard into some of this. And so it was gonna take a little bit more than that to kind of shake what's happening. Yeah. So I knew it was wrong. What do you see? It was wrong, man. I'm like, you wanna recognize you're making somebody cry. Like for fuck's sakes, stop. Mm-hmm. So something not recognized in that stop. And um, anyway, he tried to get me fired because I wouldn't uh, submit mm-hmm. to what he wanted me to do. And they, he went to the producers and they're like, me or her? And they're like, she works harder. <laughs> <laughs> also, probably because I was like, probably really cheap too. So by comparison. Um, yeah, learning about salary stuff is always kind of brutal until realizing mm-hmm. how less I was being paid. Yeah. Uh, compared to my colleagues that were male, that was pretty brutal. Um, some of the indigenous stuff did come up quite often because we, <clears throat> I really do love our industry. Really do love it. It's so diverse. We get to meet so many different cultures. We get to interact with so many different people. Mm-hmm. And you get to learn so much. 
Uh, it, it, there, there's some some tough parts about that too, where um, folks don't know, like they come in and um, if you're not indigenous, then you're an immigrant. Must be mm-hmm. honest. And they're coming in, and they'll say shit. Um, <laughs> and I had one person actually, when they realized I was indigenous, they're like, "Oh, dude, I didn't know you're Indian. What? I thought you guys were extinct." How do you respond to something like that? Seriously. Yeah. And it's like, are you trying to be a dink? What are you doing? I'm like, first off, how many natives do you know? Am I your first name? You actually know? You probably met a lot more. They all mm-hmm. don't look like Tonto or whatever belief you have in your head of what an indigenous person looks like. Right. Um, my mom was super dark. My dad is super light. Mm-hmm. Kind of come out in the middle. When I go out in the sun, I tan. When I'm a closeted psycho working 70 hours a week, fade you know it's it's a mix and mm-hmm. try it, it be you know as i've gotten older those are teaching moments yeah um the microaggressions are real too mm-hmm. guys let's just go have a little powwow and talk about some of the stuff and you're like mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. no we're not talking about that we're gonna go have a meeting right okay cool that's yeah, what i'm meeting uh what was the other one? Oh. Oh, just, I mean, I used to be low on the totem pole, blah, blah, blah. Misnomer. Low on the totem pole actually is the most important. Yeah, I learned that, so I say that to people. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a misnomer. Mm-hmm. Uh, off reservation. Oh, I didn't mean to go off reservation. But do you realize how complicated the reservation system is and how impactful that was? You know, Indian agents affected so much. Mm-hmm. And the same way the redlining, you know, affected a lot of places. Mm-hmm. It, it happens in our community, so it's just brutal. Um, sexism for women. That was a weird one when that happened. Uh, yeah, I've learned you don't have to be white to be a pa- uh, agent of white supremacy. You don't have to be a, a man to be an agent of the patriarchy. <laughs> Equal opportunity to defend them. Yeah. It was brutal, man. Like that stuff where I had uh, uh, I had one of them tell me I should smile more or that I was being too bossy. Oh my god. And I was like, <laughs> You just realize that I, I just I just work two 12 hours on the weekend for you. I'm not charging you for that. I did that because I care about this project. And mm-hmm. coming the next day on that Monday, she's like, oh, it's so rough. Like, you should smile more. I'm like, I am dying. <laughs> I'm not, that's not my priority. You don't tell the guys to smile more. You don't tell right. them if they're being bossy. And if you're trying to uh, take action or do something, that's the one that I always find kind of weird. But, you know, mm-hmm. that being said, I feel like there's change. There is change happening, and it is incredible. I think people are starting to recognize these things. We're starting to get a little bit better about it. Um, I feel like they're more open to you talking about these things, too, where they're mm-hmm. more open to learning, and that's where this is going to make the most impact is. Yeah. Ask the questions. Be uncomfortable. Recognize mm-hmm. the the privilege that you may or may not have. Like, I recognize my privilege that I'm lighter, mm-hmm. but that comes a problem, too, because then some people think, they don't realize I am native and then a protest will happen and the, something will be and then you'll hear someone from the, the floor complain about it and be like, oh, all those, oh, those Indians are doing that thing again where they're protesting the thing. What is that? And you're like, oh, dude, you know I'm native, right? I'm not white. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, that's not cool. And then you have to have a conversation and stuff like that. But yeah. It's getting better. You know, women in animation is phenomenal, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, what they're doing trying to get parody very cool i'm i'm, I'm optimistic if yeah. nothing else i'm very optimistic and uh as many people that were there to be kind of dinks there's mm-hmm. plenty out there that are being incredible and supportive and making changes and actively wanting to encourage growth yeah you know it's incredible i don't know have you kind of had that experience as well like where you're do you feel like you see a change happening um, I'm I'm just getting back into the studio space, so mm-hmm. to speak specifically, I'll have to give it more time because mm-hmm. I've uh, to be only in my mid thirties, like I've endured a lot <laughs> of stuff. Like I got videos on my YouTube channel where I sat down for like three hours re- recounting like different stories, and I asked, and I never part- posted part three. <laughs> <laughs> it was like this. It's gonna take me a minute. <laughs> like one of my previous jobs, I like kept all everything that happened to me in like a google draft like a gmail draft which i accidentally deleted one day which 
it's since it's a draft, it's not in trash. So <laughs> but it was like I had like a long list just at that job of like stuff that happened to me. And and the interesting part for me is that it just happens to me. Like there's other black people or other women and and it's like I guess you know I would used to be in the South and the South is like not my jam because I'm from North. I'm from Michigan. Mm -hmm. So being direct is considered rude. Mm -hmm. Um you know culture shock right boy yeah so it's just like I'm not meaning to be offensive I just say what I mean in, <laughs> in a very short way but not like mean way it's just yeah. like oh you talk like an auntie then you talk like an auntie <laughs> my aunties be like that too where they're just like to the point terse in and out it's, it's, that's what it is and you're like talking to the auntie on the phone blah, 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 and then it click <laughs> you know, she hung up. Bye, yes. just like, oh, right, it's cool. So yeah, a lot of Southern culture in the in the states is like not who I am. I did, you know, assimilate some. Like I started talking to random people because that's what you do in the South. Like, hey, how are you doing? But that's good though, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess. <laughs> oh no, I am. Like, an introvert, so I don't really need to talk to everybody. <laughs> oh. That's a lot of energy being expended. <laughs> it's weird, right? How that kind of has to recharge a little bit. Yeah, but it, it worked. I, I didn't protest or anything. Like each place that I've lived, I try to like take something, take what I like, and and try to learn about it. I don't try to like infiltrate. I don't try to be like a an American. <laughs> Like for, like when I went to South Korea, I'm not like trying to be like speak English, <laughs> right? Like man, that's 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 uh, that's always a trip. Like when people are about that and trying to. No, I I listened to one of your other talks and I was really impressed. Um, one of the young men was saying something about traveling, and that's kind of what I definitely feel does make change. And yeah, my time going to Katinovic really did help because like for that till to then I was like on the reserves and in town and on the reserve back and forth and sometimes you kind of start believing what they say to you it's mm -hmm. like you're not going to graduate you're not going to do this you're not going to be live up to anything or yeah. it's like this assumption on you kind of I don't know, it's not yeah, cool that, but there's other people the who are really mm -hmm. you were talking about is like mm -hmm. huge because um that's what i say about you know the power the kind of power that um people from african countries and caribbean countries who are black have over black americans because like like through the different generations black americans have been told they ain't shit <laughs> and so like it's so all subliminal to too. A country where everybody looks like you is very powerful and i don't think you know people don't always realize that and so what i people don't always r respect what both like indigenous and black Americans are doing where if we don't fight for, <laughs> for our stuff, like, like for black Americans, if we didn't fight, then they wouldn't be here. Like Africans yeah. and like Caribbeans, because there was like in the, in the sixties, it was like a quota or something like that. So it's so messed up when you start digging into the history of things and you get, I get worked up whenever I'm watching these like oldie time documentaries on the, the yeah, I get, <laughs> And they're screaming at the TV, yelling at their like, that's not what happened. Or like, you see what he did? Mm -hmm. You see what he did, right? The blanket? Yeah. Told you. Mm -hmm. And just like, it's very frustrating, some of that, uh, and trying to unpack a lot of that and to break those uh, intergenerational trauma and, um, you know, like, and it's hard. Like, yeah, dude, like, I'm learning. That is tough. It's so I like what I like following the Instagram to decolonize myself or something like that. Oh, it's a lot of stuff. There, it's it's a it's a it's a lot of effort because there's so much of, of these things that you don't even realize that you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this lateral violence that can happen, the crabs in the bucket kind of mentality, which I think mm -hmm. a lot of folks are starting now to break down that nonsense and to lift each other up. And I, it's important. It's really important. And to connecting with your roots and all these things. Like I've been taking language classes now to to reconnect with that and it feels good and yeah the, uh, one of my questions for you is like why was it important for you to do that oh well it's it's uh, there's so many things that change if you look at english itself it's oh, such a garbage language <laughs> it feels so bad for everybody has to learn english like 
Oh, uh, it's uh, you know, uh, it's talking to one of my my teachers, and she's like, you know, she she's she homeschools her kids, and uh, she's like talking about trying to teach her kids the language now too in Silchin, and trying to uh, like, how do you begin, mm -hmm. right? If you don't speak it, oh, uh, there's only a handful of the language like fluent language speakers still still alive, mm -hmm. and we're trying to keep it from from fading. Yeah. And what she's doing, <laughs> she's like. I didn't teach my kids English. I didn't just sit down, apple, apple, banana, banana, cat, dog. She was like, I didn't teach them those things. They kind of just learned it, you know, through osmosis. And then she's like, now trying to teach your kids in silica. And it's like, it takes effort and time. But mm -hmm. there's there's fundamental change. And there's like been studies done on this of how language can change parts of your brain mm -hmm. and change what you think and the way that language is spoken, the way that it's done. Like for example, you take introductions. When I introduce myself today, um, I introduce my mother first, and then my father, because it was important in our society that they introduce women first, and then the fathers. Uh, if we were going to do a more formal one, that I'd introduce my grandparents, because it's by community, and so that's how they know you, right? Like I'm sure if you go back home, they're like, "You're so and so's kid, aren't you?" And then they're like, "That's how they know you," because these generational things just kind of go and go. And the, your point is, you actually really great one about being in a room with people that look like you it makes a difference um when i see someone uh in vancouver and they're native and i'm like when they're at a store or whatever they're like can we like, give this little nod like we're cousins yeah we're, co we're probably cousins um <laughs> we just goof but i went to winnipeg um back in the day and that was like one of the first places other than going to the kamloopa powwow or that I was in a space, like in a modern space, and it was so many natives, so many indigenous people all there. And I'm like, this feels good. This feels good. Is this how everybody else feels? It was like, you know, when you, you first get your glasses and you put them on, you're like, is this how everybody sees all the time? Mm -hmm. You can see right. like all the way up. That's so cool. And being in a, a space where there's a lot more of your people there, it feels good and it feels safe. And there's no, there's no code switching. There, there's no changing of things. You can just be yourself and kind of amazing i keep hoping for that here and i keep trying to connect with more indigenous creatives and it's an ongoing process yeah mm -hmm. uh what made you start uh res dog animation oh yeah let's get into it um well okay so <laughs> with everything that's been going on um i realized how much like I said, I've been hustling, and for a lot of times when you when you do this, I feel like you know, you do feel like a bit of a token hire sometimes for some things. And for so long, I didn't want to be treated that way, um, and that I wanted to prove that I could be here and I earned my place here and I deserve my place here because I was working hard and I worked twice as hard as anybody else as I possibly could. And they came in, I did my work and I did it well, and I wanted to do better and I wanted to do more. And I took it really seriously. Um, and at the same time as doing that, I also did a disservice of not trying to do more. Like when I did my demo reel, <laughs> I did it about like um, about about my mom, and you know they, they took one of her children away when she was younger. So mm -hmm. makes me carry thinking about it. But like <laughs> my content was indigenous, and then when I put it out there, it was people weren't ready for it. Mm -hmm. Not ready for that kind of like stuff. And yeah, when we put our stuff out there, they're like. But can you do white people? But when white people do white people, they're not like, can you do black people? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know, can you model a dude? Can you model a girl? Like, is it any different? Yes, it is different. And yes, I can do both. You know, it, <laughs> I love those comic strips where they have like, just draw a kid, just draw a kid. How hard can it be? And it's like, this guy draws like two kids in the bathtub and the mom's coming to go pick them up. And it's like, it looks like two little small people, like two little old people in the tub. And he's just like, miss. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I, and this is the thing is that, um, you know, I work really hard to, to develop the skills and to work in animation and to work visual effects and games and, um, and to develop these skills so that I could do more work. And I kept on hoping that, okay, the next minority group, they're going to sneak into the crowd background. I might get a native person. Nope. Nope. Not quite. Um, I get, there's uh it's brutal i had a friend that's in marketing and she's telling me about how they're like we like this to be a little diverse and they come back and they show and they have like 
black person, Asian person, Indian person, East Indian, not Indian, uh, Native. I don't really use it. Like it's, it's one of those things where it's like Native folks, Indigenous people, you can call ourselves Indian, but it's not right when other people do. It's one of those mm -hmm. little weird things now. Uh, but and then, like she, so she goes in there, she presents it to the, the person. They're like, a little too diverse. Can we get maybe 15% less diverse? And so like they're doing the math. Of, they actually did the math of like what was diverse and not. And that is brutal. Uh, but same sort of thing happens like with crowd character. Like any, I was even open for like a crowd character or something like to work on indigenous character. And I'm like, just, just gotta sneak one in here, you know? Just give us one with a little nose, maybe a little hair, uh, you know, <laughs> a little, I get a little one, and nothing, nothing, nothing. And to this day, I still have not, uh, till actual games where I got to work on tons of indigenous characters. It was phenomenal, mm -hmm. and I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's people are too scared to do it, they don't know how to do it, or they're just like they don't exist. We don't need to include them, or they're minority. They're not like, hold the phone. Where are you? Where are you right now? Mm -hmm. Do you know where you're from? Do you know what land you're standing on? Mm -hmm. It's indigenous. Uh, like right now, I, I'm, <laughs> yes, I'm in Vancouver, but you know, it, it wasn't always Vancouver. Like, and it, it's still, yes, it's technically you know, the municipality of Vancouver, blah, blah, blah. But like uh, the Squamish, tsleil and Musqueam Nation that were currently on unseated, you know, it's, we're here. You know, with the recent, um, we've always been here, time immemorial. You know, the kind of messed up thing too is that, um, so I'm dual because of my my nation. We were here before the borders got poof, dropped down and we we're like, this is America, this is Canada. Go forth. <laughs> uh, my, my people, we used to go down south, down the Colville and come back up and you know, so I have dual, but was, to prove that it's really kind of messed up. I don't know any other people that have to go through this. Mm -hmm. They have to go through a blood test. And it's an ancestral thing. So I got my little status card that proves that I'm it's your fucking what is it? Indian status card, what it's called. And it still has to be called Indian because that's what's called in the government and it's on the crown and blah, blah, blah. And it keeps on going. But you also have to prove your ancestry in that way. Uh, mm -hmm. So I always get a little, I don't know. With Ancestry.com, I get so wigged out and weirded out when everybody got these people. I'm like, I'm a 16th Cherokee princess. And I was like, oh, sit down, you Muppet. Like, what? Are you, who are you? Why? And what are you doing to connect with your community or your culture? Are you actually affiliated with a nation? Do they acknowledge you as a part of their nation? They're so, that's problematic as well because a lot of people were, you know, taken 60 scoop. They don't know that they're actually indigenous. They're like, why am I tan? weird mom's really light mm -hmm. must be a mystery um you know like it happened to my mom too like she got scooped up on top mm -hmm. of that and they pretty much took her in to take care of their kids and do the housework and it was ridiculous but so that whole people trying to claim ancestry is squiffy res dogs is <laughs> reservation dogs uh the the tv franchise mm -hmm. wonderful for they they did a little uh, moment on the, in the car where they're talking about land back and they're 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 subtly introducing concepts to the greater culture and and, and not in that kind of uh, ex exclusive way is inclusive mm -hmm. and they're doing it in the form of these this couple driving down the road and they're talking about it and she's like well I'm one sixteenth Cherokee and you know I was on my bobo side and you're like and her husband looks over and he's like I'm one sixteenth a millionaire she's like ah so, you know, like it's on par. <laughs> but but for me, like it was to, if I was going to wait for production to happen, mm -hmm. I might be waiting until I'm out of the industry. Like, when is it, when was it going to happen? So right. sometimes you just got to go do it yourself. And that's kind of what's happened. Um, I applied for a grant and won the grant. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Felt all, <laughs> all scooping for a little while and, and, uh, help start it and it's an interesting process to go from on one side of production to go even further and closer and i feel like i've always been kind of chasing that core of creation where you know in games you don't get to decide things and on certain things but you get closer to the film you get to get closer to vista you get closer to the concept mm -hmm. and to the idea of, of elements and uh with this you know getting the script together, getting the concepts together. It's interesting. It's a whole process. And, um, yeah. and that's kind of where it's been going. And 
it also offers me the opportunity to do a lot more freelance and to work for different projects and to make those connections and to learn from other mm -hmm. folks. Um, Shofa, I was learning from Shofa, Shofa Shuker, um, incredible artist, and he's doing his own thing. And he came up as an artist, and now mm -hmm. he's, uh, you know, directing his own show and just mm -hmm. trying to absorb as much as that as I can to learn so that I can do it too, you know. And that's how you do it. Like, you, you had love listening to these uh, people that started out and they're just like, wasn't being done. So I went out and did it, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's got to start somewhere, and it doesn't have to be perfect. And I do think right. entirely my entire journey on decolonizing and my journey in animation has been perfectly imperfect. And mm -hmm. I use that phrase. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's accurate, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, this little, it's how it is. So um, you're a mentor for Rise Up Animation. You're an active member of Women in Animation. You're a part of the Collective Bunch Society as like a more of a veteran in the industry what have you decided is your purpose in regard to how you represent and like other native professionals in animation Ooh, that's good one how do i feel about it i want to be the person that i wish i had i wish i had a mentor that i could an indigenous mentor that i could talk to to be like how did you navigate this how did you work through that um you know, the showrunner for Rutherford Falls, you know, she's incredible. Um, to Sierra Teller Ornelas, if I'm saying her name correctly. Um, and Sterling Harjo, those are two people that are now showrunning shows that they've, you know, they've made it a point for themselves to go back and to lift each other up. Mm -hmm. And we get in here. And I, do, I love this about the Latin community, uh, that they get in. And get you in. I want to get you in. I'm gonna get you in, and we're all gonna be here. And it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna help each other, and that's just what I want for the indigenous community. I want to be that person to be able to help them navigate through this, and maybe you have to, you know, skip over some of the dumb stuff that I did early on, and to learn from my mistakes. You know, it's a it's a part of giving back. You know, the back to the community. Uh, mentoring has been really rewarding. I feel like it, it, it like scruffs off some of that like little old bitter stuff that you can kind of that can kind of happen if you're in the industry for a long time you know you've seen some of these people right they're in the industry and they're kind of like captain grouchy pants or whatever and you're just like what, what's what are you so dude you have an awesome job why are you not happy you have an incredible job you were doing something really cool mm -hmm. other people are like excel sheet fill in here dun, dun, dun. fill in form send email my tps report you know <laughs> And you're getting to do something really cool, so why not feel good about it? And talking to mentees has been incredible in that way that um, you get to impart some of that knowledge and share that with them and encourage them and be like, see how far they come. Like, one of my mentees is incredible. She's awesome. She's so lovely. Like, um, <laughs> and I don't know. It's like seeing them grow. It's like how I imagined if I were to have kids. I'm not. I'm, I'm a lifetime certified auntie of <laughs> a bunch of kids and i helped raise my sister's kids when i grew up and uh, i feel like those are my kids so I, i'm not going to be a mom but mm -hmm. i feel like that pride when you see them succeeding like she emailed me the other day she's like i got the job and i was like yes 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 and i don't know like uh i would like to see more indigenous youth come into it though um mm -hmm. Kind of the trouble I think with it is is that there's not enough awareness on these jobs or these roles. Yeah. There's not enough seeing the people in these roles. What I think you're doing is flipping incredible, mm -hmm. just because you have shown and highlighted so much talent. Ah, biker mice from Mars. I geeked out when I saw that. I'm like, oh, biker mice from Mars is so cool. Baby's kids. Oh, that's so cool. I remember seeing baby's kids and being like, they're like, this is how my cousins are. This is how my family is. I'm like. <laughs> I'm familiar with this. That that one shot that sticks out of my head that's so kind of like weird and gross is like she's in the bathroom and then she's like trying to hide and press on toenail. <laughs> I can crack me up. Uh, but no, like there's so much talent back there through and through. And I think a lot of us hid too, just because we didn't want to have that thing called out on us. And mm -hmm. I, I don't want that to be. I want them to be proud. I want them to be able to share their opinions, to be in those rooms, to make those changes. Yeah, I want to help them go beyond what I'm doing. I want to see them in those high roles, be executives, make change, make choices. You know, that's 
I think it's as part of our responsibility now is to keep the gate open behind us for others to come in, you know, and to lift them up on top of that, you know, with Rise Up, I kept on hoping that I would get more Indigenous um, mentees, but I've only had one. (laughs) And that's because I brought her into it. I'm like, you're coming through this. I want you to talk to more other people because I want you to do better. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're going to do great. And I just like to see more if possible. That's kind of my goal. I, I hope love to I get can a group help together. you get more indigenous. <laughs> yes, dude. I, I, man, I get excited when I see them. I'm really like a big old crowd auntie. I want to take them all with me. Like, <laughs> I want to hire you and hire you. And that's what I love to do. At one point, I'd love to, to get a production on the ground and modernize stories, just because, for some reason, they love to keep us in these period pieces and yeah. this other history of like making themselves feel comfortable or tragedy porn. And I'm like, growing up, they were the funniest people. And you go back to a res anytime we go to power, and it's laughing, laughing until 3 a.m., just like sitting around the kitchen table and I just listen to them talk and talk and tell stories. And some of them, you know, were just like tall tales too. Like them talking about Sasquatch and stuff. I'm like, you're lying. <laughs> they stick people. And I'm like, really? They're out there. <laughs> what? <laughs> But just, you know, being on that Instagram, I just learned about um, whistling at night. I have never heard that. <laughs> you don't you whistle don't do at that. night, people. Mm-mm. 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 Um, that's a hard no. Owls too, man. To this day, it's a it's a thing. It's a thing. Cultural thing. Everybody's got their. Quirks. I was learning about other things. I'm like, hmm, never heard of that. Oh, I can't. You know, I, I love I love scary movies. I love monster movies. And uh, I can't, I can't get down to the, the ghost stories or like paranormal activity. <laughs> too real. I'm like, is it plausible? I don't believe it. It's too real. Uh, can't do it. But I know, like, they're good though. They're good stories too. Poltergeist. Oh God! Enough with the Indian burial grounds under. Th- I'm glad they saw. Oh, Amityville Horror. All these other ones. Are just like, guys, get a new story. All right. <laughs> There's so much, like, oh, okay. One other thing that kind of get me miffed is that um, a lot of grants and a lot of proposals, I think, will require X amount of Indigenous uh, inclusion in the thing to get the funding. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would like to see the things change in that they're not there as token or as to fill a spot or a name. I actually would love to see these people making choices and decisions Mm -hmm. and influencing the final product. I think that's where we're going to see the changes happen. That's where we're going to see the normalization. Um, We are modern. Like, you know, I, you know, I did run around like a little barefoot kid in the summertime, but like, like a summertime, I got shoes, I wear <laughs> moccasins, I do have them, I do wear them, I have a ribbon dress, I do these things, I smudge every morning, but at the same time, I still go on, I turn on the computer and I work, you know, like, mm-hmm. there are stories to be told in a modern age that deal with issues that we face, and they're not all tragic, they're funny, they're great, and so. Do you have any, like a couple... Uh, if they're like live action films that you could suggest that you feel like are like authentic or good? Yeah, oh for sure. <laughs> There's a bunch. Oh, you I started. Just, I know. I started my. Because you can remember. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, um, there's like there's a good handful you can kind of like start with. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, it was great because my partner was wanting to learn about this as well and um, going through and watching them. Like, is this? This is what it's like. It's all a part of it. Yeah, it's part of it. We're not all like this, but uh, Smoke Signals is hilarious. <laughs> so good. You get so many indigenous people will go in there, start quoting it. <laughs> it's a beautiful day in Indian country. You know, um, all kinds of things are great. Uh, the 1491s is a comedy group. Check them out. Mm-hmm. Um, well, hilarious group. Uh, Bobby, funny dude. I say Bobby like I know him, but I don't. <laughs> He's yeah, but it's like we're, I'm like I'm sure we're probably related somehow or anything. But uh, Indians, uh, natives react on on you fellow YouTuber, check him out. Absolutely mm-hmm. hilarious. I die every time. And whenever I was like, whenever the the new discoveries were happening and showing up in the news and media, it it hit hard and it'd be really upsetting. And I, you know, I turn to stuff like that to make me feel a little bit better and to have some like some giggles and some laughs to kind of lighten the mood. And I think that's really common in a lot of our things, you know, to to fight through tough moments with humor. And when I was thinking about the difference of how many funerals I've been to versus weddings, and it's like way more funerals than weddings and that kind of thing. Um, sorry, <laughs> back to the list. 
Uh, Night Raiders recently came out. Indigenous Futurism is very cool. Check it out. Uh, like I said, Rutherford Falls, phenomenal female Indigenous lead, hilarious. Uh, indigenous cast uh, and writer and room. Same with uh, you know Reservation Dogs. You know it's phenomenal. It's not all dances with wolves, right? So anybody could type it in real quick. They, they'll find it. Uh, Rumble, a great documentary on the history of, of indigenous music and the influence on rock and roll. Was that a P- was that the PBS one? Yeah. Did you watch yeah. it? I saw it like, and then I tried to go to PBS. I have to find it. So I oh, wanted to good. watch it. If 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 it had been on PBS, I would have watched it. It was like <laughs> a preview, and I'm like, dang it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's yeah, it's really good. It's really good. By the end of it, you're like, ah, this is amazing. So awesome. Red Bone. Yeah. Come get your love. I have, um, it's very small, but I have an indigenous, like, Oh, hallucination. Reservation dogs. Oh, Um, bread and cheese. Uh, hallucination. Yep. Yes. And then black bear, sitting bear. Yep. Check out Northern Creek too. What is it? Uh, you can check out Northern Creek too. They're really great. Okay. Cool. I will send you a playlist. <laughs> so I have like so many like random playlists on Spotify. <laughs> Snotty Nose Res Kids, man. That's my jam. Uh, they've been on so many um, shows like Trickster, controversial, but they uh, they're on Trickster mm-hmm. and the in the Robinson phenomenal writer she's hilarious some of the interviews i've listened to her and she's got the best laugh ever she's a proper auntie and uh, but her stories are great and she's another example of like talking about uh, modern stories in that mm-hmm. kind of way but there are some really good ones yeah check out sign those kids you're gonna you're gonna like it yeah so um my last question is if someone was producing a documentary about you what things would they would you want them to highlight about li- your life outside of your work in animation? Ooh. <laughs> it's kind of it, I've seen you ask people this question, and I have some people are all like, I feel like there's beauty pageant part where they come up and they're like, <laughs> world peace. <laughs> I want world peace in my family. Is that, is that right? <laughs> so I was thinking about it and man, I spend so much time working. It, it is, it is a majority of my life is work, mm-hmm. which is terrible, but it's also, I, it's, I love what I do. I, also, mm-hmm. I really do. Um, when I'm not doing it, I want to be doing it. And when I'm doing it, I'm like, I want to be doing more or something else. But um, yeah, actually, I, I think I would like to talk about um, matriarchs in my family that have raised me like, um, you know, my parents, perfectly imperfect as they were. They did the best that they could with under the circumstances. And um, I did grow up in poverty, mm-hmm. although at the time I didn't know it, right? Because everyone around me was <laughs> broke too. So I was like, this is normal, right? right. Until I, I went to like my one white friend's house in the city and I was just like, oh, you have your bathroom? Oh, this is crazy. Look at all the food in the fridge. Oh, um, I just wanted like, how much, you know, there were some bad times, mm-hmm. some of the tough times, times in like we had to stay in the transition house kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like to give back to that community whenever I can. But, um, but those things help shape you. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't want to change them. It's it's done. I made my peace with the the things that have happened, the bad things that have happened, and I've grown from it. Like I think you can go one of two ways with that sort of thing, right? Like you can let something bad be an excuse it's like well this thing happened to me so then i get to be this and i get to be a jerk blah blah, blah. or i get to make right. these dumbass mistakes and act out and be a fool or i can take that and change it and that's part of breaking up that intergenerational trauma mm-hmm. um uh i think i would like them to talk about how much the schools impacted my family and for the longest time we we all knew about this or like, a, you, if you know an indigenous person, guarantee they have family that went to one of those schools. Mm-hmm. My grandmother, she went to one of those schools and it impacted the family. She, she was very Catholic um, because of that. 
Uh, but <laughs> my dad, like my mom, like religion messed her up proper. Um, but detangling that, you know, like, yeah. But I do want to say that those women in my life, the four women that kind of raised me, you know, my sister, she was there for me. She's an awesome mom. She's got five kids. They're my little, they're, they're kind of my kids a little bit too. Mm-hmm. And uh, my Auntie Jean, she took me in for a while. I lived with her. Uh, man, she was so cool. Um, she was sly too, man. We did not know that she was writing books on the down low. And she didn't talk about it. I don't know why she didn't. I'd be like, you wrote a book. That's so cool. What? This is cool. Um, she was awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My granny. Mm-hmm. Hilarious. Man, like, talk about a woman to the point. So many, like, wonderful lessons I learned from her growing up, you know, it was incredible. I spent so many summers there with her and my grandpa, my grandpa was much older at the time. Mm-hmm. And so he didn't, he was sitting in his chair and he was like proper, proper grandpa, go sit in the chair, he's chew his snuff and watch his, you know. Uh, my granny, you know, she taught us so much. And uh, one of the ones I always think is kind of funny, I think it's universal. We'd be sitting at the table and then I get picked on because I take so long to eat and then just be like a stalemate between me and my grandpa who would eat slowest. But then someone would come over and start teasing me or something like that. And then she'd be like, hey, mind your own plate. You finished yours. You don't worry about what's on hers. And you're just like, I told you. <laughs> right. <laughs> but she was great. Like these women, like uh, when she passed, it really hit the family. Like it was, it was never quite the same after she yeah. passed. But she did so much work for the community. Like she wanted to empower the women on my reserve. So that she would help with uh, skills teaching and that sort of thing. And I had family that also brought back um, the kids to the reserve. So they didn't have to go to a school. They could work on, they could do their education on the reserve, which is, you know, really important. You know, the day schools were problematic as well, but at least they were not, you know, taken away. But I would like to th- like to shed some light on that and how resilient they are, how phenomenal and just yeah i think they're important hey i saw a video when i was looking up um the language you were learning i saw a guy who posted a um the martin luther king i have a dream speech in your language like it was a bunch of little kids doing it though so it'd be uh cool to have in your language like a phenomenal woman by uh is that maya angelou i think that's such a good one (laughs) so good yeah, I don't know. Like, I think I, that's part of why I'm I'm doing some of the stuff I'm doing on the side right now for this personal project is to to bring up some of those stories of that mm-hmm. um, that space and to share a little light, shed a little light on that, that lifestyle that was there and that the community in itself and you know you know with a mix of all the things. But I mean, it it was different. It's a different culture and different community. Like yeah. you you would take it was very common to take children in. Like if something was going wrong and somebody had something going on in their life, you could take them in and you'd stay with them and they would be with you and you'd be part of their family. And like best friend in high school, we took her in for a while because stuff. And, you know, live with my aunt a couple of years. And I never really thought about it as being weird or wrong and until I was older and it's like, oh, why did I live there for X amount of years? That's mm-hmm. strange. It was awesome because my cousins were there and you could hang out and play uh, Nintendo downstairs. Some golden eye. <laughs> yes. Had the chopped wood though. That was kind of a bummer. <laughs> Nothing like having to like put your pajamas on. You're like, oh, the fire's out. Oh. Go and chop wood and go haul it in and then get it going. Uh, yeah, division of labor on that one was interesting. But I, don't know, I think I'd yeah, I'd definitely like to shed some light on, on on some of those things and and kind of talk about how you know I think a lot of folks have misconceptions of. Of, of indigenous people to to the point of um, education and funding. I think a lot of people think we get shit for free. Mm. And you're like, <laughs> I paid for my education. It took me until, God, I was like 30 or something. It's way too long. Way too long to pay off they my bills. They think that about black people in America too. It's like, um, right? what the hell, man? Like white people, like 
people went to like camp with somebody and they're like, oh, you're going to go to school for free. And it's like, where, what? Where what school is this and where do I apply? This? So I can get it. Like, yeah, <laughs> right. Where's this free money that you're talking about? Or like, yeah, there's the assumption of not paying taxes too, which is really messed and up. And it's just like, like these yeah. kind of stories that go through the generations of their families and it's like not fact checked. <laughs> no, I just believe it as like taking my faith. I'm like, that's why traveling does help to you know, mitigate some of that silliness to realize that no, 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 what you believe is probably not true, right? I don't know. Well, that's like me saying that I used to get in trouble for calling, um, I think, uh, Ontario out east. I would say out east is Ontario, Quebec, which is not that. No, that isn't. Yes, that is east, but that's not the east coast. Right. Proper east coast is Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, and all those other places out that way. So it, <laughs> education. <laughs> we'll get there though yes we will yeah <laughs> i would like to thank you for coming on my platform and allowing me to highlight you Ooh. thank you <laughs> oh yeah, i'm excited to you you asked it was really sweet and seriously i really think what you're doing is is incredible thank it you. is so inspiring and i i would love to do something like this for indigenous people you are inspirational in what you're doing this is damn cool, for real. I, I hope every once in a while you're just like, <laughs> I did a good job. Because well, you did do, do an now. awesome job. Yeah, yeah take it. Do a victory lap. You did freaking awesome. You have so many videos. It was very cool. And the, the marathon continues, as Nipsey Hussle says. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. There's so many people out there, and I think it's it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Like so many stories of, of people and their journeys. It's incredible. It's never easy, but it's definitely worth it, right? Yes, definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. And to everyone out there, I want you to like, so I know it's real. Comment and tell me how you feel. Subscribe to Sildedil and sign up for post notifications to show your zeal. And I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> uh, Why? Well,